Well, good morning and a warm welcome to our worship together. We have Vivian, myself, Rick and Wilma with us this, this morning. Um, so let's just pause before we begin our time together. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Amen. So indeed, let's offer our praise and thanksgiving. So join with me in this hymn. All him declares the glory of the risen Lord, who can compare with the beauty of the Lord. Forever he will be the Lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow the knee and worship him alone. I will proclaim the glory of the risen Lord, who once was slain to reconcile us to God. Forever you will be the Lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow the knee and worship you alone. So we come now to our time of confession. The response for this is for forgive us and help us. God, our Father, we are sorry for the times when we have used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. Hear our prayer and in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest, but sometimes forget that you have given them to us. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We are thoughtless and do not care enough for the world you have made. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We store up goods for ourselves alone, as if there were no God and no heaven. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So having confessed our sins and received that promise of forgiveness, we move on to our psalm for the day, and join with me in the parts in dark type. So together. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer him sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. Those who go down to the sea in ships and ply their trade in great waters. These have seen the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For at his word, the stormy wind arose and lifted up the waves of the sea. They were carried up into the heavens and down again to the deep. Their soul melted away in their peril. They reeled and staggered like a drunkard and were at their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he brought them out of their distress. He made the storm be still and the waves of the sea were calmed. Then they were glad because they were at rest and he brought them to the haven they desired. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and the wonders he does for his children. 
Let them exalt him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is taken from Job 38, beginning at the first verse. Then the Lord answered Job out of the storm. He said, who is this that darkens my counsel with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set, or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy, who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst from forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garments and wrapped it, it in thick darkness, when I fixed limits for it and set its doors and barns in place, when I said, this far you may come and no farther. Here is where your proud waves halt. This is the word of the Lord. So Job there giving an amazing tour of God's creation. So let's give thanks ourselves for the wonder of God's glory. Give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One, give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One, give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son and now let the weak say i am strong let the poor say i am rich because of what the lord has done for us and now let the weak say i am strong let the poor say i am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Our gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 35, chapter 4, beginning at verse 35. <clears throat> On the evening of that same day, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they left the crowd. The disciples got into the boat in which Jesus was already sitting and they took him with them. Other boats were there too. Suddenly a strong wind blew up and the waves began to spill over into the boat so that it was about to fill with water. Jesus was in the back of the boat, sleeping with his head on a pillow. The disciples woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care that we are about to die? Jesus stood up and commanded the wind, Be quiet. And he said to the waves, Be still. The wind died down and there was a great calm. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Why are you frightened? Have you still no faith? But they were terribly afraid and said to one another, Who is this man? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, be with us in this moment. Speak to each one of you, and may you be in my words and in the hearing of each one. I ask this in your name. Amen. Now, there was once a poster outside a church which declared Christ is the answer, to which someone had added, what is the question? Now, that's been around for a while, that story. So there's that story, 
And then we have the story of Jesus calming the storm. Is this simply a story, and I've heard it preached like this, that in trouble, Jesus will rescue you? Now, those who know me well will know that I don't work with such a straightforward and simple view. Why not? Because life experience for me doesn't fit that view. There are storms where Jesus doesn't seem to rescue us. To say that he is the answer is perplexing faced with life as it is, at least for me. And today, as I read that uh, Mark extract, I was struck by Jesus' remark. Are you still afraid? Have you no faith? I'm sure it's easy for us to identify with frightened men in a boat. It may not be a literal boat, but we all get frightened as we're tossed around by life. And I want to say that it's more than okay to say to Jesus, wake up and to pray to him in our fear and anger. But we then need to hear his challenge as the storm subsides, his challenge, which is get going to get some real faith, faith that holds you fast in storms, even when there is no apparent salvation at hand, when there is still suffering and fear and terror. I wonder if that's what he means. What do you think? Which explains for me why the compilers of the lectionary have given us Job today, which we don't often visit on Sundays. And it all takes me to the verse from Isaiah, where it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. We live in a scientific technological world where we imagine that the world and human exist the human existence on it is something we can understand and control. Questions need answering, problems need solving, effects must have causes which can be dealt with. COVID has perhaps shaken us a bit. The climate crisis may be shaking us a bit more but I'm not sure that we still don't work on the basis that problems must have solutions. Which takes me to Job and his suffering. We all experience suffering, I would suggest, at a personal level, whenever we feel helpless, that things are out of our control, when they're not going as we think they should, as well as the wider challenge of suffering. Why does God allow suffering? How can we speak of a God of love and compassion when all the evidence around us seems to contradict it? How do we hold fast to faith in God? If these are your questions or have ever been your questions, do have a read of Job. Read the whole lot if you can stand it. It is a book about faith in the face of undeserved suffering holding to faith even when there is no reward, no wealth, and no obviously pluses. It's no mean challenge for us, but I will give you a summary. So Job is a man of Uz, wherever Uz was, and life was good for him. He has th seven sons and three daughters. He's got huge herds of animals and loads of servants. And on top of that, we're told he's a good man, a righteous man. Then disaster strikes and the whole lot is lost. He has nothing but still worships God, able to say the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Then he loses his health too and ends up covered in boils and sitting in the ashes. Job is left bewildered. All that he believed about God has been called into question. And do remember that suffering is only a problem if we believe in a God who lo is loving and cares. It's not a problem if you're an atheist for whom suffering is part of the absurdity of life. It's not a problem if you believe in an angry, vengeful God. For Job, who believes in a caring God, and is now experiencing the absence of God, it's confusing, 
bewildering. Anyway, friends come along to advise and help and sort him out. And there are assorted arguments, which include them saying to him, God must be in the right, so you, Job, must be sinful. They say that God is majestic and powerful, so we mustn't question him, as Job was. And basically, they defend God. They also make the suggestion that suffering is good and brings good results. That's actually a distortion, as an aside. A person's response to suffering may be creative, but I don't believe in a God who wills suffering. It's not his perfect will, but we do live in a fallen world where there is suffering. Job stood his ground in the face of his friend's arguments. I do not deserve this, he said. His friends took the hump. What was Job's worst fear? That God had abandoned him that he had somehow fallen through a hole in God's management of the world. You might recognize that feeling if ever you've suffered from depression. Why is God so distant, so unfair? The problem of suffering if we believe in a loving God. So it takes until chapter 28, sorry, chapter 38 for God to speak. And that's what you heard Rick reading to us. Go on reading it if you like. It's wonderful poetry and we only got a few verses. God speaks out of the storm. He makes himself known. There is no answer to Job's questions, no apology for his accent, absence. But God has come. And he takes Job on a tour of the heavens and the earth and the sea and the stars and the animals. Like taking a child by the hand and saying, look at this. The wisdom of God in creation is opened up to Job. It's as if God is saying to him, let me amaze you with the complexity and intricacy of this creation. And think we know even more now how complex and intricate it is. He says to him, I was never absent. But he reminds us we know so little. God's wisdom transcends our human understanding. And at the end of it all, Job says, I didn't understand. Who was I to question? This side of Easter, God might also have taken us to the cross and have us gaze on his son hanging on the cross. And we would have to echo Job's comment. Who am I to question you, God? because there are questions for which there are no answers this side of heaven, problems which human logic cannot understand or solve. Yet God has come. The pilgrimage of faith, I'm sorry to say, isn't always, if often, a pilgrimage of sight. Job stands for all who try to keep trusting, even in darkness. God invites us to live in his light with struggling faith, untidy edges, imperfections, apparent absence. God holds all things in his hands, the hands of grace, the hands that bear the scars of nails. There is no evil, no pain, no suffering that he doesn't endure there, including the seeming absence of God. And that is mystery, why it is like that. There is always mystery when we're meaning business with God, why I don't like simplistic answers. I wonder, how do we do when all we, we believe about God is challenged as it is from time to time? Suffering may be the occasion of knowing his rod and staff comforting us or it may have no apparent plus side. Yet God in his wisdom will be in, at work and it's not given to us to see it for now. And that is difficult for us, but we're called to walk on as Job did. And perhaps what I'm trying to say is best summed up in that Footprints poem. One night I dreamed a dream as I was walking along the beach with my Lord, 
Across the dark sky flashed scenes from my life. For each scene, I noticed two sets of prints in the sand, one belonging to me and one to my Lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that many times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you the most, you would leave me. He whispered, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you. Never ever during your trials and testings. When you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. So perhaps that poem is more simple than the journey I've led you on today. But I would encourage you to think about how do we hold fast when we suffer, when God seems absent, when things aren't as we wish they were. Amen. So sing with me the following hymn. Be still my soul, the Lord is at your side. Bear patiently the cross of grief and pain. Leave to your God to order and provide. In every change, he faithful will remain. Be still, my soul, your best, your heavenly friend. Through thorny ways leads to a joyful end. Be still, my soul, your God will undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Your hope, your confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be clear at last. Be still, my soul, the tempest still obey. His voice who ruled them once on Galilee. So now let us affirm our faith as we say together the words of the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So we come to a time of intercessions. So let us pray. What kind of person is this? Even the wind and waves obey him. As residents of God's universe, let us pray now to our loving creator. Lord of all truth and goodness, we pray for those in positions of authority in the church all over the world and each gathered community, that in all the storms we may be enabled to hear God's calming voice 
and deepen our trust in him. And when I say calm our fears, our response is and teach us your peace. Calm our fears and teach us your peace. Lord of great power and majesty, we pray for those with political and military power and all whose decisions affect many lives. Speak truth into motives, honour into actions, and your vision of peace into every conflict. Calm our fears and teach us your peace. Heavenly Father, we pray for all single people, for couples, for communal groups and families, as they weather their storms and learn from them. Lavish on all who have the care of others, the capacity to bring peace and calm fears. Calm our fears and teach us your peace. Lord of all healing, we pray for those whose minds and hearts are in turmoil, whose lives lurch from crisis to crisis, for those who find their lives shattered by illness or injury for peace in those threatening storms and the settling of all anxiety. And we bring before you, Lord, those in need of your loving and healing touch. Calm our fears and teach us your peace. Lord of eternity, we thank you for your reassurance of life beyond physical death. We pray for those who are dying alone unnoticed and unprepared. We commend those who have died to God's merciful forgiveness and eternal tranquility. And again, Father, we bring before you those we love but see no longer, for those who have died recently, and for those whose anniversary may be at this time. Calm our fears and teach us your peace. Lord of creation, we are full of wonder at the story of your universe, spoken into existence and sustained with such love. Calm our fears and teach us your peace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And our collect for today. God, our Saviour, look on this wounded world in pity and in power. Hold us fast to your promises of peace, won for us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We're coming now to the end of our service, so join in this final hymn. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us o'er the world's tempestuous sea. Guard us, guide us, keep us, feed us, for we have no help but Thee. Yet possessing every blessing, if our God, our Father be. Saviour, breathe forgiveness o'er us, all our weakness thou dost know. Thou didst tread this earth before us, thou didst feel its keenest woe. Lone and dreary, faint and weary, through the desert thou didst go. Spirit of a God descending, fill our hearts with heavenly joy. 
Love with every passion blending, pleasure that can never cloy. Thus provided, pardoned, guided, nothing can our peace destroy. So may the Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.